All right, Steve, you go first. <laughs> How did I manage that? I'm number six. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yeah. It's one of the only ones who wrote anything down. Uh -huh. At least mine are uh, supportable. <laughs> oh, so, okay. Hi, my name is Steve Covington. Uh, yeah. I work for the Aerospace Corporation yeah. okay. on contract with the U.S. Geological Survey uh, at their headquarters. Uh, the principal systems engineer for the National Land Imaging Program, the makers and the people who bring you Landsat. Uh, okay, so first I'll say uh, good representation around the world, Belgium, uh, China, ESA in the uh, U.S., so we, you know, USGS, NOAA, NASA, we're, we hit pretty much all the uh, high, spot, high points of uh, the industry. Uh, from the industry side, uh, we've got academia with Boston University, uh, we've got Planet, Google Earth Engine, and a host of other uh, Company. So really a good representation. A lot of USGS people in the crowd, actually. Uh, so since I was group number six, I went with six bullets of uh, going down just to the end. I won't tell you about uh, people wanting to walk along the beach at night in the sunset. Uh, so what do you want to accomplish uh, with this meeting? I've got six that I'm going to talk through. First of all, the most simple and basic one, staying up with the current technologies and learning, which I think hopefully we're all here to do. Uh, second. What, is, what does ARD actually really mean? Uh, what does it mean to harmonize Landsat and, and MSI data? You know, what, what are the definitions? And I think uh, we had a food fight, so we all started trying to say what exactly we believe ARD is, what we think interoperability is. So, uh, Ignacio, the, the start of your talk uh, hits right on what I'm looking forward to for the next two days. Um, number three was getting perspective on what others are doing with ARD. So. Uh, I know what we're doing with USGS. I know what these guys are doing. I have a fairly good idea what East is doing, but uh, industry, that's what we really want to understand because from a USGS perspective, we want our future ground systems, and well, satellites working down to ground systems, to produce usable, exploitable data imagery for, for commercial and end user exploitation. That's what we're all about. Uh, number four. Learn the new standards, encourage applications of those standards, and accessibility. Uh, I think the key here was open standards. Uh, people should try to use open standards to the extent they can. A side note I gave to myself as somebody was talking about that is, personally, as a guy who doesn't have to work in the commercial field, is what is the nexus of profit motive and open source data? I think probably some people really understand that in this room. I don't understand it at all. So. I hope to learn more about that in the next couple of days as well, personally. Number five, uh, what is the role of space agencies to help the commercial sector? Somebody else said that, but that's, that was me as well. That's, it's what can we be doing to promote what all you are doing? Uh, number six, uh, how to make the data more explorable, discoverable, and exploitable? And that kind of sums it all up for me and our group. Leo. Wonderful, thank you. Thanks, Dave. Um, we got a really nice diverse range, mix of people from you know, large agribusiness through to small universities, small private sector um, earth observation companies, satellite imagery providers, Australian federal government. So it was a nice diverse mix of, of, of crew. Um, we sort of we went through a, a range of interesting topics and riffed on a few. I think the there's the idea that there's a whole bunch of portals and this whole sort of yak or yet another portal concept is something we want to try and steer away from. There's a, a fair bit of commonality about people wanting to be able to just use an API to get access to rich multi-temporal data. Um, there was a fantastic new acronym I heard, which was SLAW, um, the shitload of annoying work, which is <laughs> that comes before, you know, and basically a lot of people think of analysis ready data as the N minus one step to their point in the analysis chain. So you know, having somebody else take care of all the annoying, shitload of annoying work that you don't want to have to get done, so you can add your special source in the middle. Um, so that, that was an interesting perspective on ARD very different to when I was first started thinking about it. Um, and the other really not nice, n nice sort of dimension on this was the realisation that people who come from other domains, so either the climate and weather domain or the radio astronomy domain, have been grappling with precisely the same sorts of problems. So they'll often use different bits of semantics to point to those problems. And so you've got, you know, net CDF climate and forecasting standards to allow people to wrangle large numerical arrays and you have um, radi radiometric standardization in the radio astronomy sphere. And so that ability for us to look outside the way in which we're trying to solve these problems as to how other people have, have solved 
this and similar large numerical array manipulation and standardization um, considerations was a really neat little facet on what we were discussing. I'm Arielle with Planet and group number three. Uh, a lot of themes going on. We had lots of folks across public sector, private sector, USGS, NGA, um, agribusiness, et cetera. Um, uh, not to be redundant, um, the, the two main things that came up were we had a bunch of folks who had been in attendance at this at stack sessions one and two, really interested in thinking about this one as sort of the cornerstone of what will become of stack, and so excited to see how that plays out. Um, and then. I think that big question of what is ARD was something that came up with a lot of folks. Uh, one other piece that was interesting, um, this question of data accuracy in the context of ARD and stacks and, and what that should mean and how we should uh, make that available and accessible and understandable. Cool, thank you. So, oh, what happens if I had two microphones? So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't crazy. So, um, we had a really, wonderful group and it was beautiful to sit outside too. So we have about nine people from companies, three folks from ac the academic world and two people from the government. So it's really interesting mix of people. I think, I don't want to be repetitive here, I think we all care about the same things. I think there's a big driver to reduce cost. I think there's a big hidden cost in copying this data in a thousand different ways just so you can control the provenance. So how do you do that? A big uh, conversation that started to converge around uh, discoverability. How do you discover the data? But then if you pull that thread, what really people want to do is what data is good and what data is bad. And then how do we take that into some sort of, you know, qualifier, like an error. I mean, I said an error bar. Some other people said a description of how the instrument was working at the time. But ideally, getting to the point of analysis real data, I think is users shouldn't have to know what payload this comes from and then all they should really be handling is something that is statistical significance, right? So, so trust of the data and prominence was a big, a, big, a big thing. Another thing was essentially, of course, reduces law. And the other one is increasing the amount of data sets in general and their availability. So, so those are the things, that the topics that were talked and there was a lot of other, you know, the same topics that came up at this other one that are slightly different. Hi, uh, my name is Mike Jeffy. I work for a company called Climate Corporation. Uh, we have offices in San Francisco, St. Louis, Seattle. Um, I'm here with a number of my colleagues. Uh, we do, uh, we work in the agricultural space, very interested, we consume uh, quite a bit of earth observation imagery. So we're very, very interested in the conversations that, hap that happen here. Um, uh, I was fascinated with the um, I guess the abundance of, of people that had launched satellites in our group from planet to uh, um, uh, cosine to uh, Satellogic. I mean, these are companies that are on like, I've always wanted to meet representatives from, from all these different companies. So I was just very fortunate to have that opportunity. Um, what some of the things we want to get out of this data provenance mapping um, we want to understand what multi constellation ARD means um, you know not just our own interpretation but where the industry is um, we want to find out how people are using the data uh, how we're going to consume the data that's going to be public um, things that we can do to accelerate the public the, the enabling of that data um, and unlock potential for analytics because uh, we are primarily, we do a lot of data science um, and just see how people are using uh, data. So that's it. Awesome. I think I have a mic. Maybe. At least. Can you hear me? Maybe. Yeah. Um, I took less good notes because my computer was up here and my phone was somewhere else. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think echoing a lot of what others have said, uh, Super great diversity, really cool to see people from just all sorts of different perspectives. Um, people who've been in imagery for 30 plus years, um, people with civil engineering backgrounds, uh, software developers who are just wanna move this stuff around and um, you know are psyched to, to help out, but kind of treat it more neutrally. And um, yeah, really great. Uh, I, there was a lot of interest and enthusiasm that this event is feels more led by industry. I kind of, uh, you know, the, Governments have been meeting for a long time about interoperability and kind of tapping into that practical, you know, 
let's ship it, um, and you know, really gathered in industry was a, a common theme. Uh, I'm excited by what the cloud opens up and kind of how we can shift a lot of how we do things and throw out some of those past assumptions. Um, and then a, a theme of building blocks. This was particularly with Stack, but uh, with other uh, stuff as well, of just you know, building these little Lego bricks and being able to move in and out of Stack and in and out of ARD and you know, think about those small pieces that uh, are able to be reused as opposed to thinking about the big monolithic system and, and letting it kind of unfold from there. Um, but yeah, it was an awesome group.